What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here. So, thank goodness, because uh, overall this was a pretty frustrating performance. And it, honestly, it wasn't a bad performance. And uh, as far as Tuchel is concerned, you know, because I've had my issues with him over the past couple day games, today was not as bad, uh, but I still had some issues with him. But let's of course talk about the big issue today, and that is VAR. Um, yeah, <laughs> really bad. Because it should be 2 nothing before halftime. Because first of all, what is clear and obvious? Well, you look at the foul that was committed from Espilicueta. Is that a foul? I mean, some referees will give it, but Martin Atkinson said no. So VAR should not be able to look at that and say, well, actually, you know what? I think you got that wrong. So you go look at it again. Because that's not what VAR is intended to do. VAR is supposed to say, hey, I think you might want to take another look at this from a different angle, because I don't think you had the best view of this. From the view that I saw, it's just a tangling of legs. It's not like Espilicueta fouled him. His back foot gets tangled up with Espilicueta, which knocks it onto his other foot, and he falls. I mean, you can even see from his reaction, he didn't think it was a foul either. Like, he did not see that as a foul, so that's why he tried to continue playing on, even though he's on the floor. So the fact that he didn't think it was a foul, and then VAR says, no, I think that's a foul, is already an issue. But then you look at how long it took after that for us to score the goal, it's not in the same run of play. Like, from that, a cross happens, a little bit of, you know, bing, 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 knocked around, and then play resets, hudson Adoy takes it out, and then sends in another cross, and then we score on that one. There's too much time in between that. I mean, if you're going to let that much time happen, then you might as well pull it back like a good two minutes from, oh, well, actually this foul is what started their possession that then they knocked it down the field and then they scored two minutes later. I mean, where, where do you draw the line? It should be you reset. If it's not in the immediate buildup to the goal, it should not be able to be looked at. So a bunch of issues with that. But then Martin Atkinson was just really bad overall today. I mean, the red card, maybe a little bit of a balancing. Uh, it was a poor challenge, but again, kind of similar. Is that clear and obvious? I mean, it's the same angle that Atkinson had from the first lunge. If he didn't think it was a red card before, then him looking at it again should not really change his mind. So the fact that he looks at it again, there is that argument again. Is it clear and obvious error? Is there enough there to say, actually, you got that wrong, look at it again, because I think it should be red? No, the VAR should not have that much influence on the game. However, in that case, I think it was actually, honestly, I thought it was going to benefit Southampton, because with 11 v. 11, there's a chance that they could be stepping out and then get caught stepping out. 10, they're going to pack it in more. They're not going to really venture forward as much, which is going to make it more difficult for us to play through. However, thankfully, you know, we did manage to find our way through eventually. It <laughs> just took a little bit longer. Um, but, yeah, so that that was already frustrating. Um, as far as two tools concerned, the lineup, I don't really mind. Hang on. Sorry, there's a chance Arsenal could get scored on. Um, I didn't really mind the lineup too much. You know, you've got a back three of Chalaba, Silva, Rudiger, not bad. Despilicueta and Chilwell, not bad. Lots of Sheik and Kovacic, not bad. And then Timo and Lukaku and Hudson Odoi up top, not bad. It's different, it's inventive, it, it allows some players a chance to, you know, see what they can do. So I didn't really mind the lineup. As the second half wore on, though, his subs for me didn't, I, I, I don't know. The first one was not bad. I keep saying not bad, I just realized that. The first one, Mount for Hudson Adoy, it, it's an effective change. You know, because Hudson Adoy was fading as he tends to do in the second half, and Mount provides a bit more of a workhorse in the middle. You know, really gets us moving on both sides of the ball. So it was good to bring him in. Jorginho for Kovacic, a little bit less mobility in the midfield now. You know, he does provide a bit more calmness in the midfield. Although, <laughs> what what. Uh, What's his name? Ward Prowse got sent off for. It's kind of another possibility that Jorginho can bring that, oh goodness, the ball is not right to me, so now I have to lunge in because I'm not going to get there because I'm not fast enough. Um, but then, you know, it does get Ward Prowse sent off, so I guess there's that benefit. But he's 
not as mobile as Kovacic. So you've actually brought somebody on that's going to give us a little less work in the midfield and then Kovacic does. Even though you know Kovacic hasn't been great this season, I thought he was actually pretty effective today. And then loftus Chi comes off for Barkley. And that's the one that makes me go, why is Barkley now getting a look in in this team? Now granted, he did send a great ball across to set up the second goal. You know, cross field to Espilicueta who knocks it across, Werner's there scores. So that ball was great. And it's not like he played terribly, but I look at the options we have on the bench you know, I, I look and see, okay, Chilwell's not playing well. Alonzo should probably come on. And then, of course, Chilwell goes and scores later because that's just how it works. Anytime I complain about a player or want him subbed off, they go and score. But that was an option, because, especially because Southampton were so pushed back and then after the red card as well. You wanted a bit more attacking threat, and Alonzo provides a bit more attacking threat than Chilwell does. So that was something to look at. And then also you got Havertz who, I mean, were, were making more forays forward into their defensive third, Havertz is somebody who can provide another option up there. He can provide a bit something different, you know, from what we have in the front. So, I don't know. I just feel like you bring Barkley on for Loftus-Cheek, I mean, what's the difference in those two? It's a like-for-like like sub. They're both kind of box-to-box -box midfielders, but I think Loftus-Cheek is a better player than Barkley is. So you've actually sort of downgraded just brought on fresh legs. So I don't know. I I didn't really understand those two subs. First one was fine, but his subs need to improve. Because we saw in the last two games we needed improvements in the second half and we didn't get it from the subs. This was another game where I feel like Mount was a good sub. Mount was the sub that changed the game for us. But then Jorginho and Barkley didn't really make much of a change. It was just more of the same, just fresher legs. And that energy did help, but as far as the style of play, as far as what they brought to the field, that really didn't help us. So, disappointing there. Um, as far as the individuals, Mindy and Goal, I'm, I don't know why. Because he's such a good keeper, I don't know why he's so bad on penalties. Because he's very good at making reactionary saves. He's very athletic as well. So you would think somebody that athletic and somebody that good at making reaction saves would be able to react to the penalty and make the save. And yet he still always guesses, and he's terrible at guessing penalties. He's terrible at guessing which way. I think most of the time he guesses the wrong way. So I don't, I don't understand that. You know, because I know I've talked about this before in my reviews. I've always been somebody that I, I used to coach keepers – I always said, don't guess. And I know most of the time at the professional level, to, to save most penalties, you have to guess because most of the time professionals are not going to put it in a situation where you can easily make the save. However, I've always been of the mindset, if you guess wrong and then they put it right down the middle and you have dove out of the way, <laughs> that makes you look stupid. So in my opinion, it's better to wait and react and then they have to put in a good penalty for them to score rather than I guess and then my guessing has now made it an easier penalty if you you know didn't put it the way that I guessed so I just that's that's always been my opinion on how penalties should be handled obviously that's not typically the way that it works most of the time you read the situation you read the player kind of try to read like which way they're going to go um, but Mindy's terrible at that, it seems. So I've always just, I've always thought for him it should be wait to see where the ball's going, you know, react, set yourself, and then go. And he just never does. So I know it's a bit of a rant, but this has come from a guy that, again, I used to coach keepers. So it's just my mindset on things. Um, but, I mean, overall, it's just it's pretty much the only thing he really had to do today, although the ball that he sent out to Jorginho to get Ward Prowse sent off was dangerous. Um, so, again, with his feet, sometimes can be a little scary. The back three all did fine. Uh, Rudiger made some runs forward that were pretty good. Almost set up Lukaku for a goal, which was <laughs> very, very well worked the way he worked himself into the mid and instead of having the shot like he normally does, besides slipping Lukaku, who unfortunately was standing offside. So, um, but all three of them 
you know, Silva, again, just very calm in the middle. Chalaba had a couple nervy moments on the ball, but he looks comfortable. He looks like he fits into that back three well. And defensively, he works hard. Um, the only thing I will say, there were a couple times where it felt like he was kind of diving into a challenge, you know, whenever it was one-on-one situation. feels like he's not the best at stop and go. You know, so those situations where the wingers come down the line and then the winger stops on the ball and Chalaba stops as well and the winger goes again, feels like he sort of dives into those challenges a little too much. So that's just something to work on, you know, the one-on-one situations. Um, the wingbacks, Espelicueta, worked hard all game, really busted it. A couple of times he was looking a little tired but still gave his all throughout the game, and that's just something I come to expect from him. You know, I can remember – Watching in the Champions League final, there was a moment where he looked done. He made a sprint down the line, then a sprint back, and he looked just like he, he was done. He couldn't handle anymore. And the next thing you know, he's – oh, wait, no, that was against Madrid because it was against Hazard. Next thing I know, he's battling against Hazard and taking him down and you know winning the ball back for us. So he's just that type of player that even if he's winded, even if he's tired, he can still give you a little bit more. And, I mean, he had to go the rest of the game. So – yeah, he's, I don't know. I just I love having him out there. He's such a, a good player to have, even if he's not the greatest on crosses. Sometimes he'll put in a good one, you know, like we saw today. Um, but he's just such a hard worker down that right side. And I've talked about this before as well. James is a better crosser, is a better dribbler than his Piliqueta. But what his Piliqueta brings on that right side, you know, the, the work rate, it makes me want to have his Piliqueta out there over James even though he's not always going to put in the best cross. Because I'd rather have somebody who's going to work his butt off and provide an option and be available than a player who's just going to sort of stand around and wait for the ball to come to him, and then maybe he can do something with it. It's just it's my preference of the type of player I want to see. So, um, And then on the left side, Chilwell, not a great game from him. And I, I talked about him midweek. You know, he came off the bench, needed to prove something because Alonzo's taken that spot from him, and I thought he didn't really do much. And again today, I mean, just – Great volley for the third goal. Decent on the attack. You know, provided some good options. He was available. He was making good runs down the line. But defensively, you're getting beat too easily. The decision to go down to give up the penalty was stupid. I mean, that's that's wreck stuff. I mean, you get that out of your game early in, in, in your performances. You know, this, this is not a mistake that somebody who is seasoned, somebody who's been playing at the professional level for a few years now, this is not a mistake you make as a defender. They touch it past you, you don't lunge in like that. That was so dumb. And he's just, I don't know, overall, I, I look at his performance, and he wasn't that great. Now, Alonzo's not been that great, but he's not made any dumb mistakes. So on the balance of things, neither of them have been great, but Chilwell made dumb mistakes today. <laughs> and some bad giveaways, bad penalty to give up. So, yeah, I, Alonzo still takes it for me. You know, again, great goal from Chilwell today. But in my opinion, that doesn't really quite measure up to how bad his performance was overall. It doesn't balance things out, in my opinion. Now, obviously, Tuchel could see it differently. This is just obviously all my opinion. This is why I do these reviews, because I'm giving my opinion. Um, but, yeah, if, I, if I'm if i looking between the two of them, I'm still going with Alonzo based on Chilwell's past two performances. I don't think they've been good enough to get Alonzo out of the starting position. In the midfield, Kovacic and Loftus-Cheek, like I said, improved performance from Kovacic today. Played better, looked more energetic. But again, he's getting stuck in these situations where last year and the year before, he was able to get out of these tight situations. He was able to maneuver himself very good about keeping possession in tight areas. This season so far, he's not done that. You know, he's giving the ball away. He's getting it poked off of him. He's dribbling into worse situations. It just feels like he's not as effective at keeping possession. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what changed. I don't know if players maybe just figured out his, the way he does it maybe and has found a way to nullify that. Um, but, yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like he was so much more effective the past two years, and now this season he's just not really helping us in the middle. Um, whereas Loftus-Cheek, I think, has really done well at showing that he can do that. He's very good little chops back and forth. You know, somebody comes to poke a, a foot in and try to poke the ball away, and he's very good about keeping it away from him. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know why Loftus-Cheek suddenly has that ability, and Kovacic doesn't, but that's how it is right now. And 
again, I think Loftus Cheek has shown he's more than just that. He's more than just keeping possession and making long runs from from deep. He's showing he has a willingness to win the ball back. He's showing he has a willingness to work, you know, on the attack as well. The final ball could have been a bit better today. You know, he had a couple opportunities where he could have sent somebody in or he had an early ball or an early pass that he didn't give. And then, you know, a few touches later, now he's suddenly he has no options and he's in trouble. Um, so that has to improve a little bit, just the decision-making. But I think that will improve the more he plays. You know, I think the more he plays, the more he'll find himself in those situations and the more he'll make the right decision. Um, but as far as his work rate today, though, it was really, really good. And that's something that I've just always had an issue with is I don't think he's worked hard enough for the team in the past, and now I think he's finally found that. So he's combining that with the, the ability and the talent that he has, and I think that's good to see because I think he's going to be effective for us. Um, and into the front three, Hudson and Doyle I'll talk about first. Kind of an interesting position for him because he was, he was on the left side, and he wasn't – he was wide. I, I don't know. It was it was weird. It was like he was playing a wing position, but he's playing on the left side, which means now he can't drive down the line like he likes to do. Now he has to cut inside, which is not something that, I mean, it's easy to defend against. It's easy to read that situation and say, all right, well, he's right-footed. He's not. He doesn't have a left. He can't do anything with his left foot, so I just have to make sure he doesn't come inside. And there's so many situations where it felt like that's kind of what happened. Now, one thing I will say in his defense is I think he worked hard. I think he busted it for the first half. I think he really did well as far as keeping possession and making our attacks look dangerous because he got himself into space, he would get the ball, and then he'd make something happen with it. You know, So even though he wasn't as effective with what he normally does, which is driving down the line, hitting a cross in, I think today he showed he's got a little bit more in his game aside from that because there were a lot of moments where – he had to come deep. He had to receive it deep, and then he had to, you know, work with the players around him. Quick little one twos, and it created some of our best attacks in the first half. So, yeah, I thought overall he performed well. I just think it could have been even better if he wasn't hindered to he's on the left side, which is not his natural side, and he's only got really one option if he gets the ball out there. Um, but then second half, you know, again, like I said, he faded. He just started becoming less effective. Is Brighton about to score? No. <laughs> Um, he became less effective. He, I don't know. It felt like he really dropped off. His work rate dropped off as well too. He wasn't. He was losing possession a lot more. His passes weren't really coming off. So the fact that he was the first sub was not surprising to me. Uh, the other two, Lukaku, another game where it just felt like he's waiting for the game to come to him. Stepped up a little bit near the end. You know, made some better runs in the second half after the red card. But overall, I mean, I just. I worried when he was brought in, is this the player we're going to see? You know, the player that I remember when he was at Chelsea, even when he was at Everton, once he was sold to Everton, kind of dropped off a little bit. When he went to Man U, he dropped off even more. And he just was such a stagnant player. You know, there are times when it felt like he was waiting, hey, send me the ball. Well, you're not moving, so how can we send you the ball? There's a defender on you. We send you the ball now, the defender's going to beat you to it because you're standing and waiting. You're on your heels. And he's done that for the past few games. And today he did it for a lot of the game again. You know, and it's just, it's not what I want to see from him. I want to see him making runs that are causing problems for the defenders. And he was doing that in the first few games. When he first came in, he looked mobile. He looked strong. He looked like he was ready. Hey, I'm checking in so I can turn this defender. Or, hey, I'm making the run in behind so I can try to beat the defender. He's not doing that anymore. Now he's just sort of standing in the middle and waiting for the game to come to him. And it's not helping us. Whereas Werner, again, making runs, trying to make things happen, I'm glad he got the goal because, I mean, he worked so hard today. <laughs> and honestly, he got a goal taken away from him in the first half. He deserved a goal for his performance today. You know, he had a couple missed opportunities again, which is something that you kind of just come to expect from him. Um, so it's just it's disappointing that people look at those missed opportunities and that's what they judge him on. They look at that, they're just like, God. I mean, look, one-on-one with the keeper, all he has to do is just place it around him, and he puts it right at him. God, look at this. Basically, all he's got to do is just find a corner, and he's scuffed it right at the keeper. Uh, too many moments like that 
I get it. You know, I understand it is frustrating. In fact, there were a lot of moments that happened before he scored that it was frustrating that he's missing these chances because it's 1-1, and we need that goal. We need the goal to win, and he's missing these chances. I get it. Like, it is frustrating. But you look at how hard he's working. You look at how Lukaku works after he misses a chance. It's not comparable. You know, you think about Murata. You think about Torres. These strikers that came in, and they were not highly rated at Chelsea because not just they missed opportunities, but they also didn't work hard after either. You know, they'd miss a chance and the head would drop. You know, Werner, he misses a chance, he's frustrated, and he works hard to create another chance for him. You know, he gives the ball away because of a bad touch, he works hard to win it back. I don't remember Murata Torres ever doing that for us. So, yeah, I, I just do not think it's comparable how, you know, how bad Murata was or how many chances Murata missed. You can't compare that to Werner because Werner just works so much harder overall that he benefits the team. Even if he's missing chances, even if he's having a rough game when it comes to finishing, I think he just brings so much more to help the players around him, to provide opportunities that I, I want him on the field. I want to see him play because he's constantly trying to make things happen. Whereas Lukaku, he misses chances, his head drops, and he's not available for the next five minutes because he's pouting. I don't know if he's actually pouting, but it just seems like he turns off after he misses a chance because he's not available anymore. You know, he'll make a run in, and then the cross doesn't come to him. Does he make a run back around to try to, you know, curl his run back so he can be onside? No. He stands offside because he's done. He made the one run, didn't get it, he's upset, and he's done. And he's offside. And he's not an option anymore because he's turned off. So that's that's kind of where I am right now. I, I would rather have Werner in my team because he's going to work harder for the team. And that we're a team right now, we've got good players, but we're missing some really good players. You know, Mount still returning from injury. Pulisic not available. Conte not available. We're missing some really good players, and some players are not really giving their all. And I think that's why we've not been getting in the results that we wanted the past couple of games because we've not really been playing well as a team because our striker is not giving us that option. So that's kind of my rant on our strikers right now. As far as the subs that came off the bench, Mal, like I said, he changed the game. Uh, when he first came on, you know, a couple good touches, a couple good runs from him, but you could just feel the energy start to flow into the team. You could feel us starting to gain the upper hand again, and then the red card happens, and, I mean, it's still just his work rate. You know, they talked about, oh, Barkley came on and that changed the game. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it was Mount coming on that changed the game in our favor. It just it took a second for us to really get going. You know, it took a second for Mount to get going. But once he was flowing and once he was making those runs that we saw him make last year, I mean, there was just so much more movement. There were so, so many more Southampton players being drawn around and having to guard him around the field that it just provided so many more options for the players around him. And it's something he and Werner have in common. <laughs> you know, it's their hard work rate and the runs that they made that just it, – it's so good to see <laughs> – if you're playing with them because you just feel like okay they're making runs which now opens up space for me and now I have an option I am an option um, so yeah it was good good to see from him I'm sad he didn't get on the score sheet or get an assist because from the hard work he put in I thought he deserved it um, and then Jorginho came on and like I said had that first scary moment where ball's not quite to him and he's a little too slow to get there and be comfortable with it um but it, then again, it also did get Ward Prowse sent off. So it was like, it's a weird moment because it's scary, but at the same time, it also benefited us because now it puts them down to 10 men. Um, but I mean, just overall, after that, it was easier for him to play. And whenever he has time and space, he is good about knocking it around. It's just, you know, it, it's a game that he didn't really help us much, but he didn't hurt us either. He was just sort of fresh legs, like I said, for Kovacic. And then Barkley came on and, like I said, had a great ball across his Equita, but, I mean, overall, it just, again, it's just fresh legs. That's all he really brought to the field. He was just, he was working, which was good. I, I mean, I'm glad to see that he was working hard because I've seen him sort of get on the pitch and walk around and be lazy before. Um, but I just don't see him as an option. 
You know, I look at the players we have. I look at the talent we have on the bench. And, yeah, ZX not really performing well. But Havertz, he's had some good moments. He's popped up with some great runs, some great chances that he's created. So I would like to see one of them given a chance to see what they can do rather than let's just throw Barkley on and, I don't know, maybe he'll do something great, possibly, but I, I'm not really expecting it. <laughs> so whenever he does, it's a shock. Whereas when Havertz and Ziek, if they do something great, then it's like, great. That's just, I don't know, it's it's a weird thought process. It's like, do you, Would you rather put on somebody that you're surprised if they do something great, or would you rather put on somebody that you're upset if they don't do something great? I don't know. It's, a, it's an odd conundrum. But, I mean, overall, we got the win, which is what's important. <laughs> you know, it, it was not an easy win. It was a hard-fought win. It had to deal with some issues here and there. But... It's at least good to get the win going into the international break, so it's a good feeling to have. You know, don't have soccer next week, so nice to nice to see that we ended it on a good note. Um, but I mean, obviously, once it come back, it's it's going to be pretty rough. You know, got a lot of games coming thick and fast. Got you know tournaments. The winter months are coming in as well, which means a whole lot of games during this time. So hopefully, we're ready. I mean, we don't. Talking about a deep bench, talking about all the depth that we have, looking at what we have now, not really a whole lot of depth. You get past that first team, and even some of the first teamers, like people are not really performing up to their standard. And I think that's what's hurting us right now, is we need to be performing well as a team. We need to be working together. And sometimes it feels like it's just sort of individuals out there playing and they're not really playing up to their best. So we're turning in very average performances. And I, I worry because I look at the bench and I'm thinking – None of these players are really performing well either. So what are we bringing on that's going to affect the game? What are we bringing on that's going to change it? So hopefully Conte can come back fully fit, return, you know, ready to play. Because we – I feel like he's going to be kind of a key player for us going forward because you could tell past couple games we've missed him. You know, we've needed somebody in there to, to affect the game, to change it. And I feel like – after that City game, after he came off, you know, we just looked so much worse, especially defensively. We've, we've given up a lot of chances. So, But anyways, all that being said, and that's about it for me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on this game? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss, all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to Chelsea Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.